Hi everyone, so I want to talk about Otome games again and last video was about Ikemen Sengoku or Ikesen and interestingly I recently restored my iPhone or rather my iPod and the application, the app of Ikesen, um, I lost all the data there because I made a backup but then I couldn't access it and yeah I lost all of that which is great so and it's interesting because I was complaining about how everything costed money and it was also expensive and you had to keep paying for the same thing over and over and other kind of stuff in the last video. Point is, um, now I want to talk about Voltage or Love365, 365, 365, and I want to talk about my best and worst or rather my least favorite and also my favorite stories or routes um, that I have seen and played there. Um, I feel like most Voltage main stories are either kind of good or excellent. There's just a few that are really, really bad in my opinion, or the bad ones are just kind of like more forgettable. But today I do want to focus on some ones that I was really mad about and that just really... I'm mad that I even paid money or that I even spent time at all on them. Some of them are going to be the characters in general, some of them the issue is more with the storytelling and the story itself. So the first one that I want to mention among the worst is uh, Keita Mitsura from Irresistible Mistakes. This one pisses me off because the story kind of tricks you into thinking that it's a light-hearted, you know, feel-good story. The conflict is really forced because suddenly the guy is kind of an asshole out of nowhere and for what, you know? And there's a bit of a backstory to explain it, but it's just a really weird excuse that and the whole change in attitude basically comes out of nowhere. And of course I don't mind a flawed character, I think I like flawed characters, um, you know, because they're obviously more interesting to read about, but being a two-faced asshole is a little bit too much. It's very unlikable. And also there's nothing about the story itself that is interesting enough to redeem the character or anything. Number two is Takahisa Togo from Rose in the Embers. And first of all, just it's horrible. Some people, I guess, like the angst, but I feel like that's a bit too much for a game that's supposed to be like really feel good or whatever, and that's not even my main problem here. But in the Togo route, there's really no main point where they start to become closer and to like each other, you know? It's just like he really can stand her and really kind of demeans her and puts her down and acts like she's stupid and all these things, and suddenly he's in love with her. And everyone else, almost everyone else, is like such an asshole to the main character too. And it's like, this is just too much, you know, it's unbearable. And one thing I still remember is that in one of the first episodes, Togo tells her to be up at a certain hour, you know. And I think it was like 5 a.m. or something. And she's up at that hour. And he's like, oh, you're one hour late. And she's like, no, I'm not. Because you said 5 a.m. and it's 5 a.m. And he's like, well, when I say a certain hour, I actually mean an hour before that. And it's like, okay, regardless of the fact that that's stupid. I mean, to ask someone to be up at a certain hour when you really want something else, like just the whole idea of asking someone to do something when what you really want is something else, like just say what you want. And secondly, like what? I know that Japanese culture is kind of, it has these subtleties like that, you know, but I think that's not the case here because even the main character, who is also Japanese in this story, she was also very confused and really like baffled by the fact that he said something that he didn't mean and it's something that's supposed to be serious, you know? And he's like so mad at something that was basically his mistake and that's never even acknowledged, you know, the fact that he was being such an asshole about something that was never even her fault. And it really feels more like the love interest is just an asshole and she, he wanted to have an excuse to like be shouting at her and it's just so stupid the way he acts and the way that it sort of gets redeemed in the end all suddenly out of nowhere because he likes her and he's like... I know I'm not alone because this is actually one of the most hated routes in the whole Voltage catalog. Um, it has a fairly low rating. And at least in comparison to other Voltage stories. Third one is My Sweet Bodyguard, the Subaru route. I don't even remember his first name, like the main story, but I don't remember his first name. 
So I know people love him. A lot of people, I think this, this actually seems to be a fairly popular route, at least for this title, but I cannot stand that guy. He's such an arrogant character, not even funny. He's not even funny. All that he does is like tease her, DM the main character in like, not even in a fun and cute way, you know, it, or flirtatious way. Like he's just being arrogant, like putting everyone else down and acting like he's the only person who deserves respect. And I think a better version of this character is maybe Ichigo in um, Dreamy Days in West Tokyo. Uh, obviously that's a different story and Ichigo is more of a teenager in the main story at least. But I liked at least the fact that in that one route the story seems to acknowledge that Ichigo is just being kind of immature and he's teasing, you can tell that he's teasing is always stuff that he doesn't really mean and that he really does kind of like you at least seems to. And with Subaru it's very different. It's like he really does believe all the stuff that he says about himself and about the main character and about other people. And the story just treats his immaturity and his bad attitude like it's something cute or like charming and it's really not. So yeah, I don't like that guy at all. He's probably my least favorite character. Um, it's kind of between him and Togo, I don't know, but don't like them at all. I don't recommend it. Number four um, is... KG, the main story for My Lady Juliet. Um, I like the actual character a lot, but there's something that I really hate that the story does. There's this thing in the story where the main character's father arranges for her to sleep in the same room as an arranged fiancé um, because she's in an arranged marriage in the story. Not with KG, but with another guy. And all of this happened with him knowing that she didn't like the fiancé that much and he tried to get her fired, her father tried to get her fired from her job where she was doing really well and she was getting all of these really important opportunities and projects. And then later on, after all doing all these horrible things, later on the story just tries to make you feel sympathy out of nowhere for him. And it's like, you're just, suddenly the story ignores all of the bad things that he did and he's like, oh, you know, the father's good too. And it's like, what? Like, the whole thing was never even brought up again. The whole thing that he basically tried to fuck up her life, to force her into controlling her, into doing whatever he wanted. It's just terrible. It's honestly terrible. And it really left a bad taste in my mouth. Not, I don't mind the fact that he's made to do things that aren't right. Because, obviously, you know, there has to be some conflict in a story. And sometimes, for there to be conflict, people have to do things that are wrong. But I, I want the story to at least acknowledge or, like, explain try and explain or give you a reasoning behind why something happened or acknowledged in some way that it was wrong or that it happened even. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the best ones. Um, one of my favorite ones has to be Air of Samurai Code of Love. In general, the title I think is just great. I pretty much love all the characters. I think I've also, I've actually read all of the main stories of all the characters, ex except maybe for the leader, what's his name? I don't remember, but I don't really care that much for his story, but um, my favorite character is probably Harada. Um, I know there's been some criticism about the title, by the way, because it sort of copies uh, Hakuoki, allegedly, I guess. Um, but I've seen some walkthroughs and stuff like that from Hakuoki, and there's definitely many similarities, but I do feel like the tone and the characters are completely different. And also Hakuoki seems much more slow paced and not as focused on romance. The, the tone is just very different. The designs of the characters and everything, it's, it's very different in my opinion. Harada is probably my favorite one, like I said, because at first he might seem like a sort of meh character, but he feels sort of safe in a good way, you know? Not in the sense that the writing, the storytelling is safe, but he has this sort of really competent and protective kind of attitude. Um, he's very focused on doing things well, on doing what's right. But at the same time, he can be more playful, you know? He can be more... have more of a personality because I feel like other characters in this title are kind of in one of the two extremes. Like uh, Okita, for example, he's a little too playful and never serious. And Hijikata is a little too serious in comparison and a little bit colder. So I think that Harada is kind of a good middle ground between them. And the second one that I really like from that same title is Takasugi. Um, this is sort of his story, or at least the main story, is sort of an enemy's two lovers because he's an enemy of the Shinsengumi. And I like this one a bit more because 
the route it takes, I think sometimes these stories of enemies to lovers in these sort of war times or historical times or, you know, historical um, stories, contexts. Sometimes the stories take this um, approach where the main character is the one who's like lying to the love interest for whatever reason, you know, sort, sort of um, either to uh, protect themselves or whatever. And for this type of story, you know, for an interactive story, I like it a bit more for the main character to be the one who's getting betrayed or being deceived. And Takasugi is kind of cold and rough at first, but never like straight up hateful or bitter or anything. He's just kind of like reasonably, you know, um, distancing himself from her, of course, but um, the sequels are very interesting also because the story of Takasugi, um, since he's the, the enemy of the Shinsengumi, there's sort of a parallel to the main story because all of the other stories take place in the among these the, the Shinsengumi, right? All of these guys, um, and you meet a lot of different characters who have nothing to do with the Shinsengumi when you play the Takasugi stories routes. Um, and you get a different view of like the time, the place, and sort of like what it would be like for a more common person as opposed to um, a more elite person like the, you know, Harada, Hijikata and such. And I also think he has somewhat of like a really nice bad boy kind of appeal because he's essentially a criminal um, in this story. So yeah, I recommend it pretty much. Number three is After School Affairs, the character Kijonori. So he's a history teacher in the school that you also teach at or the main character teaches at and he's sort of a shy type and at least he at first he seems interested in only Japanese history like that's all that he's really passionate about and all that he talks about and I also actually find that very like charming and actually kind of interesting because sometimes it feels like a lot of these characters don't really have any specific hobbies or anything um, so he's kind of like that nerdy type, you know, but he's very caring and sometimes he shows a bit more confidence Even though he's kind of shy for the most part or awkward He shows a bit more confidence sometimes But I like his shyness and his awkwardness as well And I read all of the stories of his route, of his character And I've just loved all of them, including the special stories Like they, They're also great and he's so nice and just great Number four is My Sweet Bodyguard Daichi Katsuragi. So he's a confident, um, kind of awkward sometimes, again, a more serious um, bodyguard for the main character, right? So what's most important to him is protecting the main character. Obviously at first it's because he, it's his job and he takes his job very seriously and over time it becomes more because he falls in love with her and all that. And like I said, he, thinks, he takes things very seriously, especially his job. Um, he's very charming because he's so overly formal, but he's trying to be kind of like softer or more understanding with the main character because she's just like a, you know, normal college girl that he's protecting and he doesn't really know how to interact with her um, because most of the people that he has had to guard are um, like adult men or whatever. And I have to say that this this main story of his character kind of does really have this obvious twist, but I don't think it affects the story too much, just the, the fact that it's a bit obvious. Um, it doesn't make that much of a difference. But the epilogue and the sequel are pretty much flawless. Um, I haven't read beyond the sequel because there was something about the story, the premise that I just didn't catch my attention, but I can definitely recommend um, the main story, the epilogue, and the sequel. My favorite one from Dreamy Days in West Tokyo is actually Ko Uraga. Um, he's also a sort of shy, you know, kind of cold type, but he's, again, he's never outright rude or, or hateful or just mean, you know. I like that he seems kind of, in a way, honest about his feelings from the beginning, like he's not too direct because from the beginning it's kind of clear that he wants to spend time with you and he's interested in you or the main character but he never really says anything too blunt and specific you know um until the end of course but um unfortunately his character only has like three stories so there's not a lot to him but i really wish there they make more voltage voltage makes more um stories about cole raga because he's so cute. Number six is Be My Princess Jacob. So this is one that I played very recently and 
he only has a main story unfortunately he doesn't have a sequel or a his pov or anything um so he's a prince of course like all the other guys in the title and he's i guess supposed to be russian i mean um guessing from the general sort of like context of the fictional country that this is supposed to be set in that he's a prince of sorry for that sirens there but um, because, you know, not just the names of, of the people and everything, you know, they live in this really cold country, snow, full of snow all the time. What else? I mean, there's a lot of things that make you, make it pretty obvious to you that they're supposed to be Russian or like countries inspired in Russia. And I don't, I, I'm not sure he comes off as a Russian man. I mean, I've never met one, much less dated one, but I feel like from my image of Russian men, that's not quite a stereotype that I imagine, you know? I, I imagine them to be kind of like a bit more cold-hearted, at least at first, and not especially romantic, I don't know. Um, I think that my image of one would be more like Ivan from the sequel to the Be My Princess title, um, who's more like cold in the beginning, more forward, more, not very forward romantically, but more blunt, you know, just in personality. And in comparison, Jacob is kind of almost like friendly, you know, almost a bit pol more polite, more flirtatious or more like a gentleman rather than flirtatious, I guess. Um, not necessarily romantic either, but he, I mean, I don't know, he just gives you this vibe like of being a very good person, be being a very trustworthy man. And so I, that's, I think that's partly what I like so much about his character and I wish they would make more of him again. It seems that a lot of these characters I, I, I maybe maybe some of my favorite characters apparently just aren't the most popular ones, you know. I don't know, but I really wish they would make more of those stories. Last one that I want to mention is a Dangerous Seduction, the character Inui. Um, so Dangerous Seduction is sort of an underrated title, I would say, because it seems that a lot of people, from what I've seen, say that it's kind of like a boring title or something, and. I don't really see it at all. I played all of the characters in that one and I find them all very interesting um, and very entertaining storytelling, um, interesting characters too. I mean, I think it's all pretty great there. So Inui is kind of my favorite one, I would say, because he's almost like a father figure to the main character. And I like the premise because the guys of the title are sort of like, oh, they are criminals, but you know, of course, there, it's kind of softened to fit the tone of a romance story, you know, it's kind of idealized, I guess. Um, so they're not too much of a, like, hardened criminal type, but they're also not, like, completely spotless and flawless, like, great, perfect guys, you know, which is good, of course, it's more interesting to read about. And Inui is kind of the leader of the group, but interestingly, he's probably the softer ones among them, the softer one among them. Um, he's sort of a straight face, again, more serious type, but more out of concern or worry rather than being cold or being like trying to be emotionless or anything like that. I, again, it's one of those like protective sort of safe feeling characters, um, like more strong feeling characters, but not incredibly, not like overly dominant, you know, more like soft dominant, like slightly protective, but not overly dominant and that's why i recommend those of course my favorites do depend a lot on you know taste pretty much all of these are just opinions of mine you know they're all tastes but if you have similar taste to mine in case of like what characters in in terms of what characters you like to read about um in otome games then you might want to check those stories out and i also don't recommend the first ones that i talked about i feel like those are kind of more universally disliked ones maybe or maybe ones that I don't know I don't really see why anyone would like those first ones that I said were the worst but you know of course I'm missing something everyone has their taste and all so yeah tell me what you think down below and thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one